everyone. Yes, we can hear you now. Okay, so before the test, we are going to uh, uh, play the steel drums and then waiting for the people to come in, okay? Great, thank you, honey. Okay. So we can use three treasures to meditation first. of Lao Tzu. Earlier this year, there was a movie that came out called The Lost City, starring Brad Pitt, Sandra Bullock, and Channing Tatum. Uh, it's a movie where the character is Sandra Bullock. Uh, she, she plays an author and she gets abducted and taken to a rainforest jungle. Alan, who's a Channing Tatum, enlists the help of uh, Brad Pitt, Jack, who, who plays a character called Jack Trainer here. And the uh, it's a quite a, it's a comedy it's kind of it's kind of funny and it's pretty so it's pretty decent overall and in the movie there's a scene with uh brad pitt and Channing tatum and in this movie so brad pitt's really cool really suave and uh and the character he plays here is really tongue-in-cheek and it's kind of like a character caricature of himself in some of his previous films and so after so Sandra Bullock's character gets uh, uh, abducted and taken to a jungle forest, and and they want to, Al, Alan Channing Tatum Tatum wants to save her, and so Brad uh, Brad Pitt's uh, character, uh, so he enlists the help of Brad Pitt's character, and then uh, he asks, "Oh, does uh, uh, so?" So Brad Pitt asks, "So how long has she been missing?" And then she says, "Oh, maybe two hours." And then he, Brad Pitt says, oh, does she have a, a cell phone? And then Alan, uh, Alan says, no, she doesn't have a cell phone. And then Brad Pitt says, what about a smartwatch? Does she have a smartwatch? And then he says, oh, yeah, she's, she has a smartwatch, I think. And then Brad Pitt says, oh, then just, okay, then just uh, hit find my smartwatch. And on your, on, you'll, you'll be able to find her. Go to the smartwatch app and find smart my find my smartwatch on the cell phone, and then at the end, Brad Pitt's character says, "So wow, the uh, anticipate the difficult by managing the easy. So so anticipate the difficult by managing the easy, and then and then Alan Channing Tatum's character says, "Is that OPAC or Oprah or DPAC? And then Brad Pitt says, "That's Lao Tzu from the Tao Te Ching." Okay, so that's where I got the idea to talk about uh, Lao Tzu today. So from this movie, uh, now, okay, so let's start here. So there are countless English language books uh, talking of the Tao. Okay, so we have, uh, this is the Tao of Bill Murray here. This is the Tao of Twitter. This is the Tao of Willie. Okay, this is the Tao of Elvis. The Tao of Warren Buffett. There's the Tao of... Charlie Munger, there's the Tao of Meow, okay, Understanding and Training Your Cat, the Taoist Way, so there's so many different books on the Tao, but um, the first book on the Tao, the Tao Te Ching, is the Tao of Lao Tzu, and so today we're going to talk about Lao Tzu, so Lao Tzu was an ancient master who lived in China 2,500 years ago. We actually don't know much about his life story. The name Lao Tzu is an honorific title. Uh, when translated into English, it simply means the old master. Although not uh, verifiable, the most widely accepted historical account uh, comes from an ancient historian in China called Sima Qian. So from his, from his accounts, uh, and from his writings in the first century BCE, uh, he uh, we learned we learned that Lao Tzu was a renowned scholar who worked as the keeper of the archives for the emperor at the royal library in the capital, which is present day Luoyang in the Henan province of China. And from this, we can conclude that he. Uh, so from this, we can conclude that uh, 
he is by far the most famous librarian throughout the annals of history. Okay, at least we can conclude that because, uh, okay. Now, the most popular story about Lao Tzu that you can, uh, that, that you can also find in the writings of Sima Qian is that is this story of Lao Tzu riding off on an ox into the sunset. Okay, where's the where's there? He's okay, he's riding very slowly. Okay, in his old age, Lao Tzu grew weary of the moral decay of life in the capital, and he anticipated the kingdom's decline and its inevitable descent into chaos and war. The kingdom strayed, off, strayed too far off the path, the way the Tao. And so he set out to venture westward into the unsettled frontier. It was reminiscent of those American pioneers of the 19th century. But in this case, he wasn't doing it for land or he, and he wasn't doing it for profit. He was doing it to safeguard the teachings of the Tao. He arrived at the Western Gate. So this is the gate that links. Uh, so this is the gate where if you go through this gate, then you are headed off on the Silk Road into the West, which would have been, uh, uh, you know, the Central Asia. Okay. And then in farther on, to, you know, to to India, to Iran, to Persia, to the Middle East, and even all the way to, to Rome. Now, uh, the, uh, he arrived at the Western Gate of the Kingdom, and, and, but before he crossed through the gate, he was recognized by the guard, by the border guard, as the sagely master that he was okay the guard that recognized him is actually quite famous too now his name is Yin Xi, and he urged Lao Tzu to record down his wisdom of the Tao for the benefit of the people still living in the kingdom now Lao Tzu contemplated the request and eventually he obliged to it so touching the heart of the uh uh, and this this act touched the heart of Inshi, the border guard, and he eventually became a, a, a disciple of Lao Tzu and followed him on the rest of his journey teaching the Tao. And uh, where they ended up uh, on the Silk Road is, is we can never be sure, something we can never be sure, but some say that they in fact did make it to India and even even... Even there's some some literature that says that they even uh, taught uh, Lao Tzu actually even met with the Buddha Siddhartha Gautama, the Buddha in India. So it's it, um, okay. Now the landmark piece of work that Lao Tzu handed over to Inshi, the border guard, is now known today as the Tao Te Ching. Uh, it's written in a very poignant, to-the-point style that condenses grand ideas into short lines of verse. Okay, so it's written in the, the version we have handed down to us is around 5,000 characters in length. And originally, it would have been written on something like this. this. These are bamboo slips. Okay, and we can see each in each of these slips, maybe two or three of these slips, or even... One of these slips is is could be a chapter, okay, and it's divided into eighty one chapters. So we can see that the length is not very long either. Now, five thousand characters in length—that's like the word length of a couple of high school essays in English, right? Uh, to um, in in comparison, all those other books about the other Tao of books that we took a look at just then are all at least like fifty thousand words in length, a hundred thousand words in length. Now, 5,000 words, that's the genius of Lao Tzu, 5,000 words, uh, expressing these grand ideas, these profound ideas, these great pieces of wisdom, but without excessive elaboration, without wordiness, and expressing them in only 5,000 characters. And, and in that way, Lao Tzu reveals the way, the path, the Tao. Now, that's quite a remarkable feat. Now, um, 
Lao Tzu had access to the royal library of the emperor. He was the grand library, librarian. And so he had the opportunity to le read and learn the works of the ancients. Now we think of Lao Tzu as an ancient, but actually there were ancients who came before him. Uh, so he, again, so he was around in the maybe 500 BCE, uh, 600 BCE, but well, a thousand years before him, there were ancients, and there was there was there were ancients um, sages, and and they were all uh, in China. They had uh, written language at at that time, so these traditions were passed on uh, for, for, uh, for you know for for uh, since time immemorial. Now, okay, so even with this this uh, so. But even if you think about it, even okay today, uh, so he had this library. But even today, we we people have something more powerful than he ever had, and that's the uh, the internet. So we have boundless access to information, and we can find anything we are looking for with uh, for without uh, having to get up from where we're sitting, and he, we don't even have to put down our drinks or anything. So. But even with all this information, all this power, information power, we can't match the wisdom of Lao Tzu. So we cannot match his wisdom. So we, why is that? Why is that? Why can't we match this wisdom? It's because the wisdom of Lao Tzu comes from, not just from books, but not just from information, but from observations of the world as it is around us, some observations of nature, unsullied by man, uh, from the mind, observations from the mind, from the, from the spirit, unsullied by greed and the pursuit of one's uh, self-interest. So you don't need to go on a physical journey to, to or, or you, and you don't need to go on the internet or, or on Google to find that. Lao also once said that without stepping outside the door or peering outside the window, we can know the world, we can know Tao. So again, you don't need to go on a physical journey like, uh, like Bilbo Baggins and the Hobbit, even, or you don't need to use Google. You're, you're more likely to get lost and distracted. Wisdom and the wisdom of the Tao is internal, internal. It's within us. It's inherent it's there. It's our true nature. So we all have it. We just have to tap into it. And we have to un unlock it. Okay. So what happens? What happens when we look outward to observe something? When we look outward to observe something, do we say, "Hey, there, that, that's a a, a, a nice tree," or, okay? Do we say, hey, I, I like that tree, tree. Hmm. I think I could use that tree. Hey, is that wood that tree's made of? Is that wood mahogany? I think I think that would make a nice uh, uh, dinette set. Uh, I could make a nice dinette set out of that. Hey, let me go get uh, this saw here and see and make things this thing into the thing that I want it to be. And if someone comes up to me and says, Hey, wait a minute! You can't cut down. You can't cut down. You can't cut down that tree. Oh, uh, well, well, uh, I, you can't make it into what you want it to be. Well, then, then what? Well, maybe, maybe I'll get frustrated or maybe angry, and I'll cut down the tree in protest anyway. And, you know, because I've got it already in my mind, in my mind that that that's that tree is going to be a a dinette set, and that's what, and no, there's no one else who can tell me what what it is they can do about it. Is so, is and you see, so you see, so when we look out outward to observe something, we usually project our own inner attachments in, into what we're seeing, and that creates that creates uh, uh, conflict, and there's conflict internally. There's a struggle within ourselves, and if there isn't one already, then there's going to be conflict with others over what we want. And that's contrary in contrast to the Tao, of course. So, and what's often the case is that we blame, is that we blame, we blame others, we scapegoat others, 
we create anger and negative emotions within ourselves. We paint others in a bad light to make ourselves feel better, even though it never really works out that way. And this conflict creates more conflict with others, uh, feuds with others. And you probably didn't even need that, Dinette said, anyway. And ultimately, we've wandered too far astray we lose, and we lose sight of the way, the path, the Tao. And that is, uh, that is um, all from the, all starting with the, the, ourselves, of course, and the way we think and our own flaws and our own, and our own but it, it, and it's, 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 contrary to the Tao. So we have to, when we have, so loud, but the, so the way that Lao Tzu observes is t entirely different. He sees the world in a way that's devoid of that attachment. And when he sees the world devoid of that attachment, he is able, he, he, he sees the wonder of the world, the marvel, marvel, uh, the marvel of the world. And now, okay, so Okay, so hello, I've been here the whole time waiting for you. Okay, so uh, now in this movie, so this quote says, anticipate the difficult by managing the easy. So this is a very uh, popular line from the Tao Te Ching that's in one of the later chapters. It's actually in chapter 63. Anticipate the difficult by managing the easy. Now, if you take a look at the whole chapter Okay, it's it's a it's, um okay. This is the context it's within. So let's I'm going to read it. So the master of it anticipates things that are difficult, while they are easy, and does things that would become great while they are small. All difficult things in the world are sure to arise from a previous state, in which they were easy, and all great things from one in which they were small. Therefore, the sage, while he never does what is great, is able on the, that account to accomplish the greatest things. Now, this is from chapter 63. This is actually the middle paragraph. Later, I'll go over the first paragraph and the bottom pair and the, the uh, last paragraph. Uh, and this is the translation from James Legg. James Legg was a, a Presbyterian Protestant uh, missionary in the 1800s and he went to China uh, and he's, he was mostly famous for his translations of Confucian uh, literature, but he also made this translation as well. And I think it's quite adequate, quite, quite, uh, quite, there's a, there's a very good translation of, of um, the, the Chinese here. here. Now, uh, okay, we'll, go, we'll go over that part, those two paragraphs later. So the key here, the key lines here in the middle are anticipate the difficult by managing the easy, accomplish great things by starting with the small ones. Now, these two lines here contain simple yet very profound uh, truths. Uh, this is the motto from the Tao Te Ching well, uh, that's well worth re uh, remembering, just well worth internalizing, just like Brad Pitt did in, 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 in uh, well, the character Brad Pitt played did. Now, Okay, so anticipate the difficult by managing the easy, accomplish great things by starting with the small ones. Difficult situations are a fact of life. You never know what a day brings. Uh, but you alleviate the impact of those difficult days by putting the, in the effort uh, in the normal days. So making a consistent effort it's always better than doing things in spurts and running the marathon of life is always preferable to running the sprint of uh, running in sprints. So we all know that no matter, uh, no matter what it is, if it's something in our career or in our personal or, or, or lives or, uh, or in following the Tao, it's those seemingly easy and small things, those manageable things that make the difference. And we can see, here's a quote from Nelson Mandela. It says, uh, after that, he says, the habit of attending to small things and of appreciating small courtesies is one of the, of the important marks 
of a good person. So the, that habit, and and uh, the tr so this is wisdom that comes from nature, the from ancient observations of how things work in nature. So the tree which uh, the tree which feels the arms grew from the tiniest sprout. That's the that's also a line from Lao Tzu. The tree which uh, which with the giant trees you see they in in the for in the forest they they started off tiny and how long does it take for a tree to grow from a seed to be full full grown uh it takes a long time so it takes but we we see this giant tree but we we we, we don't think about oh the length of time it took to be to become that 30 years it takes tree at least at least 30 years it takes a tree to grow to that size hundreds of years thousands of years even so that's uh that's but that's fathom, fathom we can fathom that because that's in our lifetimes we could we, we in 30 years we might be able to see that happen but how long does it take for forests to grow how long does it take for lakes to form what about mountains, oceans, continents? So oh, how long did it take the earth to form? You know, billions of years. So how long does it, uh, a long time, but then again, how long does it, uh, but how long does it take to get the thing you ordered from Amazon delivered to your house? Maybe one one day. Uh, you're, uh, so so the, the world we live in today is, is, is quite, uh, uh, you know, in, in contrast to the, to 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 this, so we want things right away. But nature takes its time. Nature takes a long time to do its magic. But that's not the way that people want it. And we want our things done, you know, in an instant. But that's not the way that nature works. Nature takes a long time. It does these small things, and then over time, they, it gradually it gradually changes and 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 and. and and change and variation in nature gradually happen, as and this they happen over time in these small steps, not in these large leaps. So this is the, the this line, uh, the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. That's this is the this is the uh, most famous line in, in in actually in the book of Lao Tzu. Right, the the journey of a thousand miles begins with the single the fir the first step. Now, we, when we think about life, life's, life's a marathon, not a sprint. So even even, uh, even when you've fallen down, even when you have faced some trials or tribulations, you take that first step again. So that's that's the wisdom of Lao Tzu. So these starting from the small and working up to, and, and focusing on small and, and working up to get to, 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 to you know, to, to, make something great working on what we can manage what's easy for us in order to 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 you know uh, in order to prepare ourselves for when something difficult happens or to avoid that difficulty altogether now there's a very famous character in chinese culture and chinese history called the monkey king the monkey king is here so I, uh, the monkey king, monkey king is in a story uh, called the journey to the west it's a story that was written hundreds of years ago it's a very famous story about this monkey king he's it's just like the lord of the rings uh but the lord of the rings came afterwards but so the monkey king has to go and, and he has to uh travel from china and he, to india um just like Laozi kind of had to do, right? <laughs> okay, uh, but so to journey from China to India, and he had to get the Dharma, the Dharma, the Buddha, the Buddhist Dharma, the scriptures from India, and bring them back to China. And he and he had his own crew of uh, of uh, of people accompanying him, and just just like the Lord of the Rings, and and and. Uh, uh, when when he was about to set out, embark on this journey, he had some doubts. He said, "Oh, maybe it's not possible. Okay, maybe I, maybe it's too difficult. Maybe maybe we couldn't do. Maybe I'm not going to be able to to uh, accomplish this journey." Okay, and then his master, his master, uh, 
emboldened him with these words. So we can read it. There's nothing in the world, sorry, nothing in the world is difficult for a willing heart. Nothing in the world is difficult for a willing heart. Okay. And I just wanted to share that because <laughs> I thought it was appropriate. And it's a very inspirational quote. That I think uh, we should all uh, take uh, heed of. To, in, 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 and it's also something that... Uh, if you want to yeah. do something, you will find a way. If you, yeah, that's right. Yeah, so, if you don't want to do this thing, you will find an excuse. Yeah. So yeah. where there's a will, there's a way. Especially on... No matter if it's in life or in, in, in also in this, uh, uh, you know, in cultivation as well. This this thing we have to to uh, to keep in mind. Nothing in the world is difficult for a willing heart. And I'm going to give a sh story to share uh, on that. So this is a very very famous story in China. It's a, it's a, about an old man. Who is fed up uh, with him and his fellow villagers having to trek over this huge mountain and get to the city on the other side. So they lived in a village and they had to get to the, the city on the other side. And in order to do that, they had to trek over this, this giant mountain. Uh, and this old man in his old age, actually, so when he's 80 or 90 so when he was 80 or 90 years old okay sorry um i'm gonna ask you can you hear me can you hear me okay yes is it okay can you can you hear me okay yeah ancient, oh there's okay they're in ancient china so we're talking about the story okay the old man he says he's going he wants to uh move this mountain so he's going to take this mountain and he's going to to go there every day and shovel up the dirt the soil and then you know put it into his cart and, and take it away so he was in his old age he was 80 or 90 years old and everybody said oh this guy's nuts there's no way he's going to be able to do that that's not possible no way anyone can no way anyone can move a mountain but every day he went there with his kids and and their and their uh, uh, and their shovels and their carts to flatten the mountain. And of course, their peers ridiculed them. Uh, and eventually someone asked, so and they said, Oh, this 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 man, this man is uh, this man is silly. He's 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 lost it. He's senile. He, this, this is an impossible task. There's no way anyone can move a mountain. It's impossible. And so, uh, so he was enduring the ridicule of his peers. And eventually, someone asked him. They said, "Okay, uh, what are you thinking? You, uh, um, you, what you're doing is impossible." It's not possible to move this mountain. And then the old man said to his cr uh, critics and to the people who were ridiculing him, he said, you guys are all wrong. It is possible. And he said, I have the sincere will to do this and it will be done. He said, it will be done. Okay. Yes, maybe not in my lifetime, maybe not in my lifetime, but with my children and their, their children and so on and so forth, it'll get done. The old men led the way and eventually the mountain was indeed flattened. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that is, in, in the story, it was actually the, in this story, uh, when the, the uh, deity of the mountain heard this, this uh this the old man say this the deity was also inspired and the deities helped help move the mountain flatten it in, in it. uh but but i think the, the point is that the strong will of a person can inspire others and and that's what's important because we it, we because achievements are not for our 
ourselves to to uh, not for ourselves to, to you know bask in achievements are for you know not just for us alone but for for others people for everyone and that's the the point it's not just it's not just for it's, uh, us to fulfill our own self interest it's for for just like the Tao is the Tao the Tao creates the Tao nature nurtures but the Tao does that, uh, but it doesn't take claim to 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 what it what it what it what it is what it is giving birth to what it is nurturing. So let's take a closer look at the first paragraph. So it is the way of the Tao to act without thinking of acting, to conduct affairs without feeling the trouble of them, to taste without discerning any flavor. Okay, so that's uh, that's. That's quite a hard thing, like a hard quote to uh, follow. Uh, it sounds so act without action. So I, 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 this is a this is a, um, and that 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 quote we just saw includes a lot of like inferences by the translator James Leg to make it readable. Now here's a literal translation. So this one here. So act without action, perform without performance, taste without taste. So you can see the Chinese at the bottom is nine characters. So this is nine words, but it still is very, very, a little bit abstruse. So um, unless you, you read the Chinese, you might, and even if you do, do are able to read the Chinese, you're going to have to, uh, you're, it's, it's, you're going to have a very difficult time catching the point of this as, and, and, and this is actually talking about a very fundamental there, there's actually in in the middle here you see there's the, the actually the, the second and the third character here are actually a fundamental concept from the Tao Ching is the concept of wu, wu wei. Now, uh, so when it says act without action, it's actually saying wu, um, uh, it's actually saying wei wei wu wei just means to to um, to live your life to 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 do things with wu wei, but wu wei is a very difficult concept so i think this this at this point i want to focus on that so uwe if you go to wikipedia so uwe is w u w e i and then it gives it it gives an idea of what it is but it's still also very difficult to uh to catch the meaning because because if you look at the english translations here you have uh uwe is an ancient chinese concept literally meaning in exertion in exertion, in action, okay, uh, effortless action, okay, so like without action. So when you see that, that sounds like something that we'd all like to do on like a, a rainy like Sunday afternoon. But what were you doing? Oh, just some uwe, but that's not the point. That's 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 mis so misleading. It's 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 making it seem like seem like uh, uh, something it's not so the English English translation. So. Uwe is best, uh, most likely best uh, left untranslated. So Uwe is, is actually the state of being in the flow of being in the path with the Tao. So everything just comes naturally. It's just like being a fish in water. And the, of course, a fish has no concept of water. So when you get to that point, when you make that connection with the Tao, and it's all natural. It's all, 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 like being in the flow. When you get to that point, when you make that connection, that's uwe. Your words are, and actions are in alignment with the Tao, but you don't even know it. It, it's not. You know, it's like your, uh, uh, it's like when you do something, uh, that you've been practicing over and over again and and you you do that thing and you and you you're you just do it so naturally like some for example like uh driving a car right it's not like okay i gotta press the gas i gotta press the uh you know it's just all all instinctual and and uh, and now that and how do you get to that point how do you foster uwe um and the answer is actually in in this chapter. So how do you how do you foster this kind of way this 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 ability? And 
the answer is actually we could say partially the, uh, the answer is anticipate the difficult by managing the easy accomplish great things by starting with the small ones so just from from what from from that model from that idea so for, uh, from always in fact a lot of hard work uh, a lot of action definitely it's not non-action definitely it's not not uh it's not uh uh non-exertion there's a lot of effort you need to put in to get to that point and it's in it but it's specifically it's internal action first so sure it sure always is about unattaching ourselves from our, uh, our desires and observing and living in the world as it is but that takes time and you can't just practice uh you know meditation you can't just practice the three treasures once or twice we have to we do that consistently over time, and then we can reach the point where we can get to Uwe. So it takes time. It takes it takes it takes effort. It takes years. Of course, some people are more natural at it than maybe maybe some people are, but it takes time and effort, and in order to get to that state. So that's 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 Uwe. So um, a very fundamental concept of 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 the of uh, Dao. So uh, now I just want to share another story. So this is a mural, beautiful mural from uh, uh, um, from Vancouver in Canada. This is the Chinatown in Canada. And we can see in the mural, we have a, a depiction of Lao Tzu. So how, and how, we know it's Lao Tzu because He's on the ox. Okay, so whenever you see the the ancient Chinese uh, uh, figures, and, you, and you, if you see one riding an ox, you know it's Lao Tzu because Lao Tzu rode the ox to to the west. Okay, so it's it's depicting him leaving China, and you can see in his hand he's holding the scrolls of the Tao Te Ching or of uh, that he he handed to the border guard Yin Shi. At that time, now uh, I really like this mural because it's one of my favorite lines. A uh, couple of lines from the Tao Te Ching, and we can see the you see that the, it's it, you, it's hard to read here, so I I, I made it uh, larger here. So it takes knowledge to understand others, but it needs a clear mind to know oneself. It takes mm -hmm. strength to surpass others. But it requires a strong will to surpass oneself. So, I, so to me, I, I, I'll, this is the this is, I, actually this could be my favorite quote from the, a couple of lines from the Tao Te Ching. It takes knowledge to understand others. So when we're talking about Wu Wei, Wu Wei is an internal. I, I think it's an inter, internal thing. It's about changing ourselves. When we change ourselves, and we change the world around us. And we so ma, we ma, to, ma, to understand others ma, but takes clear ma, ma. To oneself. So we're talking about knowledge is knowledge again is like something you could get. Knowledge is now we're in in the time in the in the information world of information. You know everything Google and everything information is 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 so easy to access now. In Definitely, knowledge and all that stuff. Uh, it's, it's easier to get than than ever before, but that doesn't mean that people are wiser than before. It doesn't mean that people are 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 are, are uh, you know uh, more morally upright or more more in line with the Tao than ever before. It's not. It, it's, in in fact, it's easy. It's easier for people to get lost in the sea of knowledge than ever. Than than than. Uh, you know, and and lose sight of the wisdom, the inner wisdom. People look outward more, even 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 at home, even like Google or that kind of thing. They look, they, it's like an uh, even though you're not leaving your house, it is still like you're leaving your house. It's like you're going outwards to find things, and it takes strength to surpass others, but it requires a strong will to surpass oneself. So it takes strength, but strength, it, 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 strength is. Uh, Again, something, something. What do we need? Why do we need strength? We for to 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 you know to to combat other people, to fight with other people. No, no, and we don't. 
we, we need that i mean always about 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 getting to the point where we can avoid those conflicts with other people and it starts with ourselves and strengthen all that stuff we think it, it gets uh it strengthened that kind of stuff gets uh um you know uh we, we see that on in you know in movies and in in in, in it gets uh dr- you know dramatized oh there's this guy's this guy's uh this guy's powerful this guy's but but actually strength yeah. is something that just yeah, comes boom, yeah. Boom, yeah. Boom, yeah. Boom. It's temporal it's temporary it's people get you know the people uh just like with the same thing with it, you know pe- strength never lasts forever you know the, the it just comes and goes and but a strong will you know like the will of the 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 old man in the story that's forever and it so the strong will is 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 what's truly impressive so the strong will to surpass oneself and a strong will you you have to tap into oh wait it, it, if with it you you have the tap into the Tao and then you have the strong will to the strong will it's not surpassing others which is the which is key it's not suppressing others it's sur- surpassing yourself okay and that was the the uh that, okay, that, that's uh, let's continue more with the fir- the first the first paragraph. So th- that also has one other line, and it says to consider what is small is great, and as few as many, and to recompense injury with kindness. Okay, so this part, this this line here is also also seems like it's kind of like out of context with the with the rest, doesn't it? So like. Uh, to recompense or it, this is older English so it's hard to like we don't really say recompense anymore but requite injustice with injustice with kindness to respond to injustice with virtue it seems kind of out of place and this is actually this Chinese is actually uh, a proverb in Chinese it's one of the most famous lines also from the book but it seems out of place in the context of this chapter but but uh, in, in fact in fact, uh, uh, I think it actually fits well in it fits well here because it reminds us that this philosophy, this I, these ideas or not these these the Tao not only applies to what we do and how we behave, but always all, all also applies to to what we think in our mind and how how and and how we how we uh, uh, you know cultivate ourselves responding to injustice with virtue so so who hasn't been okay uh william shakespeare so okay I'll, I'll, so who hasn't been wronged by someone throughout their life you know who hasn't been wronged by someone throughout their life unfortunately it's, it's a fact of life that there's always going to be friction between people in the society in a community in a family people do wrong things and people do stupid things they do it and we, we we do it sometimes as well. So do do you want to live in a place where where matters are dealt with like with an eye for an eye or like where in you know the so the quote goes an eye for an eye and everyone the world everyone in the world goes blind or a tooth for a tooth, you know, and everyone is going to end up with dentures. So there are times when we are legitimately wronged. But there are also times when a mountain we make a mountain out of a molehill, or when we might falsely accuse people of things that they did not do, or because our perceptions are flawed, because the way we observe the world is actually is actually flawed because it's 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 tarnished by our by by our own attachments, and and our and we don't see the whole picture. We only see the part of the picture we want to see. And when you do this, the anger and the resentment slowly brews within you and changes who you are. So, and then over time, there's there's drama that escalates and escalates, and then there's conflict conflict that escalates and escalates, and finally, in the end, nothing's won. Okay. And now, what did William Shakespeare say? He said something about this that I I I I, I really like. So he said. The rob that smiles steals something from the thief. So, so when we talk about the re- repaying kindness with virtue, you, you, you can see even even Shakespeare has has that that uh, 
that theme some uh, that that this is in his writings as well the rob the, the smile steals something from the thief that's from othello now <clears throat> okay so here's a story about that now suppose a boat is crossing a river and another empty boat is about to coll okay uh, and um, I should I should mention it first before I, I go over this. This is a this is uh, Zhuangzi, okay, another Taoist philosophy a philosopher, ancient philosopher, and this story is is from uh, this is I'm going to be reading from the translation of Lionel Lionel Giles, okay. So suppose a boat is cr is crossing a river, and another empty boat is about to collide with it. Okay, and even an irritable man would not lose his temper. But supposing there was someone in the second boat, then the occupants of the first boat would sh uh, would shout to him to keep clear. And if he did not, if the other did not hear the first time, nor even when called to three times, Bad language, you know, profanity would inevitably follow. In the first case, there was no anger. In the second case, there was. Because in the first case, the boat was empty. And in the second case, it was occupied. And so it was with the man. If, if he could only roam empty through life, who would be able to injure him? So the thing is... We conflicts we, we can see here. So the boat when the boat was empty, the man uh, was calm and and relaxed. But when the boat had someone there, there was conflict, and it's strange how people are like that. But but why couldn't we all? Why can the boat always be empty in our minds? Here? Why can't it be like that? So if if he could only roam through empty through life, who could who would be able to injure him? Okay, so the because this anger, this resentment, not only harm is not only harms is not only harms the people who it's directed towards. It also harms the people who are who who have it within them. And okay, so then oh, I was gonna I was gonna. This is back to that movie. In the movie, in the movie, something happens to Brad Pitt's character, and Brad Pitt's character at the end says, "Naturally, I have some anger issues." To let go of and resentment. So letting go of anger issues and resentment. So now let's go to the, uh, the this last paragraph here. So he who lightly promises is sure is sure to keep but little faith. But he, he who is continually thinking things easy is sure to find them difficult. Therefore, the sage sees difficulty in what seems easy. And so never has any difficulties. Okay, so that was the last par uh, paragraph. And let me go to this part here. The sage sees difficulty even in what seems easy, and so never has any difficulties. Uh, sage, okay, now the last part. So it, uh, Okay, so I want to talk about one other thing about, and this is also connected with Wu Wei. Uh, now that we've got this, uh, and it's also because we've also got this war going on in Ukraine right now, and a lot of conflicts in the world. So, so I'd like to mention something from another ancient philosopher, uh, Chinese book, uh, an ancient philosopher, Lao uh, Sunzi. Sunzi, you know, I don't know if you ever heard of this book called The Art of War. Now, when you hear the title, The Art of War, you think, oh, this is going to be all about military, all about fighting and things like that. But actually, The Art of War by Sunzi has a heavy influence from, from Taoist philosophy, from the philosophy of Lao Tzu. Even though it's, you know, even though from the title and from, we're not going to, you know, it's always oh, about war, but it's actually not. It's, it's actually more about, about avoiding war, avoiding conflict. Okay, so, so here, the, the, uh, and in the, in this, in the, in this art of war, the Sun Tzu actually says this quote, and it's a very famous quote in Chinese as well. And he says, the greatest achievement in war and in conflict 
is actually preventing war and conflict. And, and how do we prevent war and conflict? As Wu Wei. So we have to. St- so when the leaders of the country, when the when the government of the countries has that has lead has that Wu Wei, conflict in war can be can be avoided. And that's and that's kind of also because the Dao Te Ching was was written not just not just for common folk, but it's all, in some instances instances specific, specifically it was written for for the leaders of nations to keep in to keep in mind to grasp. So 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 that is also what Lao Tzu was was saying. So then so he was saying that in order to avoid these conflicts and because in his time in 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 in, in in the one of the well, of course, the reason he was leaving China was because that people weren't 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 following this, and and that's why China uh, went from a relatively high peak in history, and it and it and it fell into uh, uh, war and chaos because people were because these, these small things weren't being done. These small yeah. things, these, ah. These easy hey. things that should have been done, that should have been done with with uh, oh, wow. uh, that should have been done were weren't being huh? done, and that's why that's what happened. So that that's uh, okay. That's my sharing today. So there were, we talked about Lao Tzu, we talked about Wu Wei, and this was chapter sixty three of the Dao Te Ching. So so uh, I thank everyone today for. For listening, if I made mistakes, I ask for forgiveness. Uh, if anyone would like to sh- share anything, that would be gratefully appreciated. And uh, specifically, I want—I would like to know if anyone has any kind of uh, 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 suggestions for those small things that people can do every day in order to become better people. If anyone wants to share or or, or those uh, any I, any suggestions or or advice, actually. For for me or for anyone here, that those things that we could do that would be greatly greatly appreciated. Okay, so thank you very much. Okay, thank you everyone. So, uh, who would like to share? I think just uh, turn on the microphone. Okay, so it looks like. Um, uh, we can ask our friend Anub. Anub, would you like to share anything? Uh, your microphone. So okay. uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, good morning. Oh, good morning. Uh, good evening. <laughs> Some people are well. Most of them are from New York in that area, but. I think it's it's morning time in in India right now. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, we have met after a long time, long yeah. <laughs> after six months. <laughs> so, actually, the uh, uh, learning of Tao um, Tao is a uh, is very vast. So one can easily one cannot easily understand it. So I am always in the morning, only listen the uh, lessons of Tao Te Ching. But still, I am not able to follow it. But some things I can, I, I are able to know that uh, good things after difficulties and the other things that before uh, controlling another person, you, you first control yourself and actually main thing is the cultivation. Uh, so how you cultivate anything, then you, you will be expert in these things. So uh, it is a written by great philosopher Laozi and so in another webinar, it is also revealed that all all the philosophy of other is that comes from this Tao philosophy. So that's all from my side for today. Thank you, Derek.
Okay, thank you very much. I know that was a very wonderful sharing. Okay, so now um, I'd like to ask anyone else if they'd like to share. Okay, uh, thanks. For, I was looking forward for the lessons. Uh, through the lessons, I remind myself as a, uh, when I was young cultivator, I think I follow uh, through this lesson that I reflect myself. Uh, as our young cultivator, I always re uh, follow the Tao seniors doing uh, the right things. You know, when I go to temple, you know, when they pray, I, I, uh, all the, uh, when they pray, I follow. When they chant, I follow. And when they go and uh, uh, trying to bring people to receive Tao, I follow. From what I do, I do with the, uh, what it call uh, Wu Wei, which is the initial heart when we receive Tao. That is very happy. So as time pass, uh, we have to always reflect ourselves. Uh, whatever things we do has to be unconditioned. Like uh, we, you do without any intention or wu way. And uh, slowly by doing, you forgot all your, uh, you forgot uh, all your past habit or what uh, you naturally, your Buddha nature will reveal. Uh, you will, Ultimately, when you help others, the most happy person is ourselves because we do it uh, unconditionally. We this which is called uh, Wu Wei. Of course, our lecturer Derek has a uh, very inspiring. I believe uh, uh, both of them has put in a lot of effort in uh, translating the Chinese into English, which is uh, using a very powerful word. Uh, uh, which uh, inspired me a lot this morning. So um, as Tao cultivators, I think it's very important. We do a lot, of, we do things uh, has to be without asking anything in return. Uh, ultimately, we are the one benefit the most uh, by putting our Buddha heart into action. Thank you. Hello, Derek. Hello. Hello, Anu. Uh, uh, I want to ask you, have you ever visited India uh, before? I've been to India one time. I've been to, uh, I, oh, actually, first I went to Nepal, and then I went to um, uh, Kathmandu. So then I went to, uh, I took the bus to Darjeeling. And then I went yeah. to uh, New Delhi. That's that's my only time. But it was a very wonderful country. I really really enjoyed my time in India. Oh, I know yeah. you're from Assam, that's and I, I I don't know. Uh, like I didn't really know about Assam before I uh, I met you. But I, I'm actually very interested in Assam. <laughs> it seems like a very beautiful part of India, and the people there are very wonderful. So hopefully one day I get I I really would like to go there. Uh, I I went to India over a decade ago now. I think it's like maybe 20, 20 oh no, 2009. So a long time ago. So so I hope one day I can go back. It's a very beautiful country. I hope one day uh, it's possible. So I am uh, very happy to uh, inform you that, that uh, in India, there is now 7,000. Oh. One in Mumbai is yep. Mazgao. One in, one in Pune. One in Nagpur, one in Kolkata, one in Bangalore, Beng Bengaluru, and one in Chennai. Uh, the, uh, in Chennai temple is uh, built by one person from Malaysia. He is called Mr. Mac. And the uh, Bangalore Tower Center is built by uh, is a, under the supervision of Madame Zhao. It is in Hanumanthanagar. And the uh, Kolkata temple is in, uh, in, in Tangra city, in Tangra, Kolkata. It is, it is under the supervision of uh, Kapiang Chung. He is from Taiwan. And the uh, uh, Mumbai Tower Center is under the uh, Madame Ch Jia. And the uh, same the Pune, Nagpur, and in the seven places. And again, uh, we have formed the organization this called uh, comprising all the temples and the other center. This called Taoist Foundation of India, and I am the Secretary General. 
I have also donated my land uh, for the Taoist Center uh, for the Northeast India. So uh, uh, we are thinking that we are going to lay down the foundation stone, stone of our center uh, in December. And so uh, I, we are also in contact with the different Tao uh, followers of France, Russia, and Denmark. Etc. in many countries that are popular, Tao followers. So I request you personally and from my organization to please attend the uh, foundation uh, laying ceremony of our center. It will be on 2nd December 2022. Again, I also inform you that we want to go to, we will we'll are uh, planning a visit to go to the uh, Tao center just like Udang, Taishan, and Pangsan. Because uh, we, uh, the, due to some reasons, we are losing our philosophy converted to Taoism. But actually, all the religions and uh, philosophies come from Taoism. It is uh, cleared. So we hope that after the visit of uh, China and other center of Tao, we are we are able to spread the uh, beliefs and thinking of Taoism to our peoples of Northeast India. Again, we are planning to go to the uh, Parliament Forum of World Religion in the Chicago next year that we can uh, include the Taoism uh, constitutionally in the Indian Constitution. So. We want your full support and suggestions uh, that we are trying to make it. Thank you, Derek. Oh, thank you very much, Anup. It's very amazing to hear about about that. And so, in India, they're opening up Northeast India. They're opening up uh, uh, the the uh, Tao Center. So we, I'll talk to it about about. What, I'll talk to uh, my wife about the offer. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds like a lot of fun, but I have to see if we can make it or not. Uh, but I'm very very happy to hear about that. So, uh, congratulations to to you and yeah, everyone. Congratulations. There.